Hi, in this video, I'd like to give you a how-to on deploying the virtual APIC in ACI. If we do a level set, let's look at a typical ACI deployment. So in a, a typical deployment, we have our leaves and our spines, and we have at least three physical APICs connected across any two leaves for redundancy. Those APICs have to be directly connected to the, to the leaves for us to properly and securely do fabric discovery. Those are always the 10 gig ports on the back of the APIC that we connect to those leaves. Those ports live in a special area that we call infra. In fact, infra is more than just a special area. It is a dedicated special tenant within ACI that has its own VRF. And this is an area where we allow for all of the intra fabric communications. This is where your TEP pool lives, for example. On the other side of APIC, we have the out-of-band management ports, and those are those one gig ports on the back of the APIC. The out-of-band management ports uh, are an independent network that is not owned or controlled by ACI and is completely outside of the ACI data plane. For example, this is where you would SSH into APIC for configuration or troubleshooting, access the UI, or engage with APIC's API here over this particular interface. So just keep in mind that we really have two parallel networks going on here. If we take a little bit of a deeper look into the logical view of this APIC cluster, uh, the, APIC, uh, the three APICs do form a cluster and they do it over those infra facing 10 gig interfaces. This is where they uh, build the configuration database, shard it and synchronize across all three of those controllers. It also does this over a special VLAN that we call the infra VLAN and if you remember when you first set up your APIC, you had to answer a series of questions and you had to choose a dedicated uh, infra VLAN. In this particular example, I chose 3456. Yours may, might differ. Uh, at the same time, your three APICs are going to automatically be uh, assigned an IP address out of the TEP pool that you also choose at initial setup. So in my example, I chose the default 1000 slash 16. So APIC number one will always be dot one APIC number 2.2 and 3.3. That will always be the case. It will always be the first three addresses out of your particular TEP pool. Now, if we take a, a shift here and we look specifically at what we call ACI Mini, this was a solution that we introduced in ACI 4.0. It is specifically targeted at very small fabrics, you know, remote offices, co-location facilities, and is limited to two spines and four leaves. The difference here is you only have one physical APIC, but the other two APICs that form the cluster are now virtual instances or V APICs running on a connected ESXi host. Uh, all of the same functionalities of APIC, the physical functionalities will be available in V APIC. But when we start to look at the more sophisticated multi-location uh, type designs like multipod, vpod and remote leaf, those are not supported with the V APIC obviously because we're limiting this to two spines and four leaves, but you can in fact do multi-site. So this little ACI mini instance that you see here can be a site in a larger multi-site environment that has larger fabrics doing other things for you. There are some, obviously some hardware requirements for each of those VAPIC virtual machines. I won't read them here. You can see that here you need some vCPUs and memory. The one thing uh, I'd like to point out here is that there are some storage requirements here. So one of the, uh, one of the two uh, hard drives that gets instantiated when you deploy this VAPIC is a, a local SSD of 100 gigabytes. And we actually do a test for performance and the test has to be greater than 50 megabytes per second. Uh, and it does, it does verify. Now, I will say if you are setting this up in a lab, a non-production environment, you can kind of cheat. It doesn't have to be an SSD as long as the local hard drive has enough performance to be over 50 megabytes, like a SAS drive or something. That's gonna work too, but this is outside of production. So please proceed with caution. That's only for lab. And then finally, uh, each of the VA picks will have two virtual network adapters both VMX Net 3, one of them will be connecting to the infra side of the house, which we understand, and the other one will be uh, used for out-of-band management purposes. So you were gonna download this OVA from cisco.com like you would download any of your other ACI software and just pick the version that's suitable for your environment. So there are some other things you need to have in place before you actually move to deploy the virtual APIC. So you need to have that one physical APIC powered on You've done your initial day zero questions to, to get the fabric going. You've fully discovered your physical leaves and spines. Um, 
At the same time, you have at least one, preferably two in a production environment, but at least one ESXi host running 6.5 or later. And that particular host or hosts are connected to ACI and the typical ports are configured, meaning you've done the interface profile and the, the switch profile and all that stuff ahead of time. You've connected uh, in a basic way that host to the fabric already. There is a, another little box that you have to make sure is enabled, and I'll show you this later on in the video. The AEP has to have the enable infrastructure VLAN box ticked, and that simply tells ACI, listen, I've got ESX hosts on the other side of this cable. I need to trunk the infra VLAN, in my example, 3456, down to these hosts because I'm going to be running these VA picks down there. Now, optionally, the way you configure that host is you can do VMM integration, which is probably easiest, but you don't have to do VMM integration. You can just do a existing um, DVS or a, a vSwitch if you like. There are some design considerations when using VAPIC with ACI Mini. So you have the one physical APIC, and that's doing all of the, the work uh, while the VA picks are merely synchronizing the config and will never come into play until the physical APIC actually fails. But when that physical APIC fails, or if it should fail, is down, you cannot add uh, or remove leaves or spines, right? Uh, and the reason for that is we need to have that layer two adjacency in order to discover and uh, add or remove physical nodes in the ACI fabric over LLDP. If you um, need to make changes to the virtual APIC, like you need to change the, the TEP pool or the infra VLAN or the name or whatever, uh, normally what you would do on the physical APIC is you would wipe the APIC and re-answer all of those day zero questions and off you go. With the VAPIC specifically, uh, we don't do it the same way. You would actually shut down the VAPIC, go into your vCenter and change the OVA properties or OVF properties and then power it back on and then those properties would be changed. So it's a little bit different, so be aware. Uh, the VA pick itself must be a part of pod one. That's not a big deal because an ACI mini fabric is really just a small fabric and it doesn't work with multi-pod, so you should always pick pod one. You cannot use VA picks as a standby APIC. Uh, and this is for reasons in terms of performance and scale. Um, there are a few unsupported features. Um, so we don't support V motion while in operation. I mean, you can shut it down and move it somewhere, but we don't do live V motion. And that's not a big deal because you've got three APIX here for, for redundancy as well. So there shouldn't really be a need to V motion anything at all. Uh, we don't do things like DRS or VMware HA. Uh, and the hard drive itself cannot be on a remote storage. Now, again, I'll qualify that by saying in a lab environment, you can probably get away with it being on remote storage if the hard drive is enough performance. But in a production environment, we say it has to be a local hard drive on the host where this VA pick is being deployed. So at the end of uh, this, all, and I'm going to show you this, how to deploy all this. At the end, this is what it should look like, where we have our one physical A pick. We've got our two virtual A picks. For each of the virtual A picks, we have one virtual network adapter on the out-of-band management network and the other one on the infra-facing port so that it can form a cluster with the other APIX and everybody is happy. So at this point, let's actually get to showing you what this looks like when you deploy virtual APIC. 